Oh my gosh, hello everyone! Welcome to twitch.tv slash HeroForge. My name is Annika, my pronouns are she, they, and I am the brand director at HeroForge. And I am so excited to see every single one of y'all Forgers in chat because we have a doozy of a stream for y'all today. Now I know you're all here to learn so much awesome stuff about kit bashing as well as the fabled release date of kit bashing and we are so excited to tell you about that but first on the off chance that you stumbled into here magically welcome so much but maybe you're in chat going what even is hero forge i don't know how you ended up here without knowing but i am so excited to tell you if you are unfamiliar with hero forge hero forge is a free in browser platform where you can go and you can create the coolest characters with dare i say the sickest stories how do you re represent those stories i am so glad <laughs> I asked, and maybe you asked too at home, you can make the coolest characters with the sickest stories using thousands, hundreds of thousands of parts and features. And what do I mean when I say that? I'm talking, you can choose from dozens of different species. It doesn't even have to be a humanoid species. Okay, you can choose from animal species. You can choose a raptor. You can choose, you can choose so many cool things. A bear, a bigger raptor. I'm really stuck on raptor right now. There's so many to choose from. And then you can dress them up in awesome armor and outfits. And with kit bashing, which we'll be talking about today, you can even dress up a, what is that? A, I'm sorry. What's on screen right now? Could you possibly dress up a giant dog in a tiny top hat with a fancy monocle and smoking a cigar? You can do all that and more with kit bashing. It's going to be amazing, but go check out the website right now, okay? Create your awesome characters, and then once you've created this cool, cool character with the sick, sick backstory, and you're like, what do I do with it? You can just save it and keep it on the website. Maybe write stories about it. Use it as your character uh, inspiration. Or maybe you can actually buy it as a physical mini to use in things like D&D, Pathfinder, other TTRPGs. And when I say physical mini, you're like, well, I don't... I don't even know what that means. Is it painted? Is it unpainted? Is it perhaps two dimensional so I can put it in my pocket <laughs> on the go? Check yes to all three. Okay, so if you wanted to buy one of our amazing plastic miniatures, we have our regular plastic. It's so good for painting, a little more budget friendly. If you want to zhuzh it up a bit, we have our premium plastic. The layer lines on this print are nigh invisible beautiful beautiful print for painting or maybe you're like i want something that if i happen to go to D D and i leave my character in my pocket and it goes through the wash it's not the end of the world and i'm here to tell you we have that as an option look at this acrylic that's right it's the same dog again but isn't this amazing it is durable it packs down flat and the detail do not even get me started on the detail okay this dog's the end of his cigar is it actually glowing quite possibly it is it's amazing or you want something that's beautiful okay you want something you're not about those two dimensionals do two dimensions okay it's 2024 we are all about three dimensions but we're all busy we don't have the time to paint a mini what if we could tell you that we offer 3d printed color minis you get the box you take the box to D, &D you open up the box right there and you get a color printed plastic mini that's right they are beautiful they are amazing and with kit bashing you can get our color printed plastic minis in whatever strange monstrous sort of llama owl bear configuration that you want check it out we have absolutely amazing stuff over there and you can take that amazing stuff and make it into even cooler mind-blowing we never thought that y'all could do it with kit bashing and i know we are here to talk about kit bashing today and i will not keep our wonderful guests waiting so as many of you know from socials we are being joined by some wonderful wonderful hero forge co-workers today please uh i guess put your hands together please type a bunch of w's in chat for the wonderful tegan and maverick hello welcome 
thank you what up, so folks? much for joining us. <laughs> Hi guys, good to be here. Now, Tegan, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone? Sure, absolutely. First, my gosh, it's good to see everybody in chat. It's been a little while. The enthusiasm that Annika uh, just conjures for this is absolutely amazing and infectious. And we have been working on kit bashing for so long. There can be moments where we're like, oh my gosh, like, is this amazing? And then chat's like, yes, absolutely. Cannot wait for it. And it, and it amps us up too. So wonderful to be here. I'm Tegan Morrison. I'm one of the original co-founders of HeroForge. I develop on the site a lot. Like I'm working directly on it. I'm working directly on kit bashing with Maverick here. Um, we are really hard at work polishing it. Um, and I'm just, I, I love responding to the user feedback we get um, and putting out the best stuff we can. So I can't wait for this. Um, and we'll be announcing the release date of HeroForge shortly. Um, Maverick, you want to go up? Hello again, guys. I'm Maverick from HeroForge here. I'm one of the uh, software developers here that works on the uh, front end of the site here. Um, I've been hard at work working on everything kit bashing for, man, it's been on my plate for the project for probably the whole last year um, for all this development. Um, and I'm here to kind of show you guys the tools, show everything that's are capable of, and be able to walk or walk you guys through uh, what we're going to offer with this. So I'll be on, our, on the controls today you see on the screen, uh, controlling the character and uh, showing the, uh, the tools that we have available for uh, kit bashing. But yeah, pleasure to be here. Back to you, Anna. I am so glad both of you joined us. And also, I just want to shout both of you out so much. I... I don't know a lot of the technical side of Hero Forge, and seeing what you two have done with kit bashing, seeing where it was just a year ago, just a few months ago, and then seeing the speed and the competency with the. You have put together something that whenever I get to go in and kit bash, I'm like, what are we doing here? This is mind blowing. This is a Forbes article. This is crazy and i am so excited for people to be able to see it but first i want to ask because there are some people we have some hero forge users that are not familiar with the term kit bashing and i am just curious how would you two in your own words describe kit bashing hero forge kit bashing specifically um mav do you want to go first yeah, so kit bashing kind of stems from uh, our classic traditional model building. So like making uh, mini figures and stuff. It's taking a whole bunch of different kits that you have of parts that aren't meant to go together and bashing them together to create something new and unique out of those different parts. So kit bashing on Hero Forge is basically taking everything that we have available on the site for all the individual parts. So our shoulders, or legs, hands, different hairs, basically everything that we offer on the site and allowing these to be individual pieces that the user can then put into the model and use however they want. So you can attach them anywhere, move them around or everywhere. And we're basically giving the freedom to use a lot of our, our assets that were designated to specific or places to be used everywhere, to be able to build and or combine them together and create something bigger or that's a sum of all those pieces together. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what kit bashing is. Kit bashing is kind of pivotal for the inception of Hero Forge, actually. So, the first character I ever made for DD, I was a big miniature enthusiast, but I'd never played DD, uh, was a, I think, believe an orc cleric with a mace. And all I wanted was a miniature that had those three things. <laughs> um, and I couldn't find one at all. So, I had to cut a mace off one miniature and glue it onto another miniature. And of course, it immediately broke during the first game. And I said, there has to be a better way uh, than, than this. And that's very traditional kit bashing is gluing things together. Uh, but it, that's one of the inspirations for Hero Forge. And now, of course, many, many, many years later, we're able to bring that kind of cut and glue mentality to the digital space which is in, in which it's so crazy powerful it's kind of mind boggling so uh very very excited for that uh, and in fact so much so the icon for kit bashing up to this point at least the temporary one has been a little a little razor the idea that you'd cut a piece of model kit up and then glue it somewhere else uh, but we've actually we've updated the the icon for release uh to be a flaming cog <laughs> so uh, a uh, a settings cog that is on fire because Yes, kit bashing will be setting a lot of the site on fire, admittedly. <laughs> All of our servers are going to be on fire. We've actually uh, hired some freelance firefighters, which if you thought freelance firefighters worked a thing, 
They shouldn't be. That's not a job you should freelance. But we found some, and they are standing by, ready to put out all of the fires from all of the amazing stuff that you create. And the one thing that I want to add on is when we talk about uh, model kit bashing, like physical model kit bashing, you can mix and you can match and you can do all that and more on Hero Forge because not only can you take like, hey, this shield is cool. Where do I want to put it? Or, hey, this amulet's really cool. Maybe it's a uh, amulet, but I want it as a necklace. That's one thing. That's one thing. But what if you go, this amulet's cool. What if I scaled it up and turned it into like a sick shield? That's a whole element of physical mini kit bashing that can't be done because you can't scale the real mini that we can do on Hero Forge. And we're so excited to show it to y'all. Um, Dustin, what do you kind of want to start with? We have some pre-made minis made both by uh, Hero Forge employees and from some of our wonderful uh, alpha testers that we're going to be showing off. But I just, I think people really want to see what this is going to look like just very broadly. Yeah, so we can jump in. We can start uh, just diving through the tools and see our, a lot has really changed since we last showed the tools. We streamlined the process. And if you look now as well, Kitbash has its own like physical area in the UI. We have sub menus for this as well. So we are, this is the first landing page when you enter Kitbash. We set the basic character. Uh, whenever you click on the character during these selections, you can then actually go in, manipulate, modify, and do controls for all of the bones and stuff on the site that you are historically and not really had, or had access to. So for instance, legs, uh, moving the entire character itself um, around, lift them off the stage, turning them upside down if you really want to as well. All this stuff is totally possible um, now with Git Bashing. Um, so we're basically exposing all the bones and stuff for, for most of the uh, character and making them available for the user to actually edit themselves um, and be able to get um, any way that they, uh, they want. So from that though, we have our, our part section up here. So we have a whole ad category. Um, this is basically encompassing pro probably roughly like 80 to 90% of the parts that we have across the site in general. Um, we have a big drop or drop down here for everything that's are available um, for these different part or parts across the board. Um, and all these can be spawned in, uh, moved around, manipulated, and added to the site. So you want boots and stuff added to the scene, you can add these on. If you really want to, you could try to fit them over your uh, character as well too. Um, it's called to use them that way, or even better, start to use uh, pieces in ways that they are traditionally not meant to be used. So you can take the boot for what, or whatever reason, and you can put it in the hand. And another great thing about this as well is, so kit bashing is really about attaching items um, to different parts of the mini and being able to use it that way. So we actually have a way to connect these two different places. So now I've just connected uh, the shoe to the hand. And now if I look in the edit menu over here, you can see that the, uh, the boot is attached to the hand or the hand itself. And now when I actually go in and move, move and manipulate the hand, everything with this is going to come with this. This, or this is true for all the skeletons throughout this. So you can basically build, attach, and create these larger structures just across the, or across the board. So by adding all these individual pieces, we can combine these and make our bigger and larger objects over time. You can just start throwing things together and make a big old junk pile if you want to. And now I effectively have one big giant piece of, uh, of kit bash to use. So this can be moved around, position however you want, reattached to other parts of the model as well too. So now I've bound, or bound it to the other hand. And when we do any sort of editing here, you'll see that we carry everything with it throughout the site. Also, uh, just a real quick aside, the UI on having all of the little nests is so well done. Like it's so intuitive to see, ah, this is snapped to this, which is snapped to this. Like that is, UI is not easy to do. And this is, I, I really love kit bashing. And I think everyone in chat's really going to love it too, because it is quite intuitive. You know, you're going to have a few little moments where you're like, wait, what did I, oh no, I made that so big. Or you'll do what I do all the time, which is you'll get something perfectly aligned and you'll be looking at it from one angle. And then you'll be like, that's great. And then you pan the camera and you're like, no. <laughs> so I'm telling y'all right now, you spin that camera a lot. You're gonna get it perfect. And then you're gonna look and it's gonna be floating completely off base. Um, just a little tip ahead of time. Now, uh, Mav, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for showing just sort of this immediate sneak peek of kit bashing. Um, and Tegan, you know, we've kind of talked about how we really had a set goal for when we wanted kit bashing to come out, but some extenuating circumstances came up that made that a little bit tricky for us. But we are here 
chat, we are not going to make you wait too long. We would really like to announce uh, when this will be coming to y'all, ideally. So, Tegan, do you want to chat about that a little bit? Yeah, I would absolutely love to. And if everything was aligned, we would love to be releasing Kibeshing right now. Um, we've been working on it for so long. It is such a integral piece of making Hero Forge like allow for anything imaginable. Um, but uh, but unfortunately, um, some of you may have already heard, we had our distributor go bankrupt um, without giving us any warning. Um, so like one day, suddenly orders stopped getting distributed. And uh, we've been scrambling for the last couple of weeks to uh, reconnect distributors to um, to manufacturers um, and uh, hope to be getting up and running very soon. Like it's, we've made some great progress um, and it looks like we'll be fulfilling orders again in no time, but that has taken a lot of attention and there's so much pipeline and technical details when it comes to manufacturing miniatures in all of these different materials that we kind of have to put a lot of focus on. So unfortunately um, we're gonna have to like focus on that um, instead of wrapping up the final details of kit bashing, though it's still, like I was saying, very well underway. Um, so the release date is a little further out than we'd like. Um, and I do want to caveat this, that there is a chance that this release date comes out with kit bashing, um, but no ability to order physical miniatures. It might be sort of an alpha preview in that sense. There's a chance though we hope to have it out and ready to go completely. Um, and so without further ado, our current target release date for kit bashing is September 9th. Um, so a little bit more than, well, a little bit more than a month and a half from now. Um, so really can't wait to get it to you. We really, really can't, um, but we have to give it a little bit of time um, just to wrap it up. Hopefully that's sooner than some people feared, um, if not as soon as some people hoped. Um, so I, I cannot wait to wake up in the morning, September the 9th, I'm going to be hitting refresh on all of our socials, waiting for some of the first creations because they I, no doubt will be absolutely mind boggling um, within seconds of release. So uh, very, very excited about that for sure. Um, we can probably get a few questions in chat about that, um, both the release day um, and uh, about our kind of distributor shifts. Uh, if there's anything I can clarify, it'd be a great time to do that. Um, but then we can move back to looking at more kitbashing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Tegan. And again, just because I, I saw some questions. Yes, September 9th is the date that we are aiming for. Um, as Tegan mentioned, just to reiterate it, uh, there is a, a possibility that it may be digital only first if we continue to have uh, issues with distribution. But September 9th. We will re re repeat it many times during this stream, but we also are trusting you to let people know. Get the word out September 9th, barring any unforeseen uh, delays or surprises, similar to what we recently had to deal with. Um, now, I did see some questions in chat. Um, one of the ones that we have gotten quite a lot, uh, it came up especially from... A uh, friend of the stream, tutorial maker, Durf, who has such amazing Hero Forge YouTube content. So, so, so incredible. Um, and we gave Durf uh, early access to kit bashing, and he's done an incredible job of kind of showcasing not only what it can do, but giving us incredible feedback on like, hey, this would be really sick. This would be an awesome quality of life thing. And we've implemented it, and it's amazing. But a question we get a lot is the 20 item limit. We have a question if that will ever be changing. Um, and also I'd love to give people an idea of why we have that 20 item limit. Cause it's not just arbitrary. Um, now Mav, is this something that you would be down to answer? Cause I know we've talked about it at length. Yeah. So the 20 item limit is er, a limit that we have in place on the kit bashing parts. The reason for this is kit bashing is a very uh, complex feature that's thrown on top of everything. Um, and the limit exists entirely because of adding or an arbitrary amount of parts to the sites and, or has a very big in, or performance impact when you're in a browser. Uh, or when you're working in a web browser, there's only so much that you can do with the resources you're given, especially with the uh, support of mobile. So we do have a limit in place or for the amount of parts um, that you could put or put on each mini. 
just to make sure that we can or maintain performance, make sure that we don't have crashes arise. In the worst case scenario, if we get, give too much access uh, to you guys to allow you to just put in as many bars as you want, it, it can reach a point where basically configs uh, can be or, or can be get too big and loading them will just start to crash each time that you load. And so to avoid that, we have a limit in place um, right now. Currently, the limit is set to 20 parts. Um, this is entirely based or based off of what we feel is about right for the performance. This can change over time, depend, or depending on how, or how we see or feel that things are going for performance. But right now, we do have or, a pretty hard limit set on 20 parts, just to make sure that we can or, or maintain performance across the board on the feature. And when people share uh, or characters around, that they get a, a good solid experience when they receive those characters so, on that end. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, while we're on the topic of kind of uh, items, so there's there's a few different um, types of question that we we, we kind of opened up a Q&A in the Discord, which reminds me, if you're not in the Discord, exclamation mark Discord and chat to be able to join it. You get sneak peeks. Uh, you get conversations with folks like myself and Mav, who love answering questions in <laughs> Uh, in the Discord, so definitely make sure that you go ahead and join it. But when we talk about objects in in uh, kit bashing specifically, one question that came up a lot is, will we start seeing props or objects made specifically for kit bashing? Uh, Tegan, do you kind of want to talk about what sort of items we'll be adding or have already added? Yeah, we'll happily speak to that. Uh, we have a little library already, um, and we do plan on adding more. We realize it's just a great need for sort of pieces of hair that you can sculpt into the hairstyle of, you, of your kind of dreams or um, all sorts of doodads. Um, and Mavo can actually probably show them right now on screen. Um, we've got some of these just primitive shapes that you can add in various ways. Um, and we'll be expanding that library over time. Though often our goal is to add parts to the site that you can put in your miniature's hand or wear or put on the, the base. And then those are just great for kit bashing. So, we don't want too many things to exist in the sort of kit bashing only realm. Um, I I have had oh man I've had a very wonderful time being able to use the primitive shapes because so many times before we added that to kit bashing it was like maybe if I take just the corner of this and kind of angle it in just the right way and having this if you're uh, this is one of those things that you might be in chat right now going I don't really see needing to use that that's not really what I'm looking for in kit bashing. They are going to come in so much more handy than you might be thinking. Like truly, that is one of those, even if you kind of dig it inside your mini and have just a little bit sticking out, it is going to be super handy. Um, to keep kind of the conversation going about items, especially, uh, we've had some kind of eagle-eyed viewers who are watching a lot of like the Derf content, for example, uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, also friend of the stream, Boylai Hobby Time has created. Uh, they may notice that they've seen stuff like uh, certain clothing posing that may not be uh, present when kit bashing launches. So um, I'm not sure if Tegan, you'd maybe want to take that one as well, but just some of the stuff that we can expect like, hey, we are working on adding this, but it is, it's not quite going to be where we want it to be for launch. Yeah, I would love to speak to that, especially because it answers a question I saw in chat, which was, can we speak a little bit more to the details of why the distributor going bankrupt um, has affected kit bashing launch? And that's because the the print like pipeline of printing miniatures that could be who knows what at that point is so, so complicated. Like we've put the print check menu in there, but there's so many details to that to figure out. Um, and we really don't want to release kit bashing without the ability to buy a miniature because otherwise you go change the perfect make the perfect change to your miniature you're like finally i can add a familiar to my miniature's shoulder and be like oh but now i can't get it anymore so um there's a lot of there's a lot of details there um that we're really trying to smooth over um and i'm uh, sorry what was the basic question again i'm, I'm <laughs> i derailed oh. a little <laughs> no you're fine um so i i actually want to talk about physical minis a little bit more as well um but uh talking about for example there are some clothing items that may have been present on kit bashing but we're we're pulling back just for a little bit got it got it um so for similar reasons uh the sort of chest pieces, the leg pieces, the skirts, are very, very complicated meshes with a lot of joints. And using them is very complicated. The potential for like to create unprintable things um, is quite complicated. 
Uh, I know I've seen, say, like, I watch all of Durf's videos. Durf, fantastic work, by the way. Um, and I know that, like, that's a big thing you've been using it for, is to hand place, say, a set of, like, leg items on top of the character so that you can get the exact proportions you want. Um, we think that that's kind of like a pretty a pretty detailed workflow that we don't necessarily want to encourage as the very first use of kit bashing. Um, we do want to release these. We will release them. We actually probably will release them at launch, but there's a potential um, that we haven't yet just because there's so many of them to check. There's so much details to get right there with them. Um, and when we release them, we want there to be tools that let you snap them to the character. Um, and they're kind of complicated tools to be like, hey, I want this chest piece that's sort of just free floating and not really attached to the character, but I want it to conform to the character. There's a lot to that, including character morphology. So uh, character uh, like muscles that adjust, et cetera. Um, being able to actually kind of meld those two systems together is really quite complicated. So. There's a possibility we don't launch with chest pieces and leg pieces and potentially a few others, but our goal is to sort of add everything to kit bashing with time and uh, and with new features. Yeah, and I see people in chat are saying that they currently have an ad. There's probably like another 10 seconds of the ad left. So Mav or Tegan, if you need to take a second to take a water break, this is usually what we do on stream. It's so easy to spend an hour talking and not hydrate and get done. And you're like that SpongeBob yeah. meme in Sandy's house, like, <gasps> so feel free to take a sip. I certainly will with this ad finishes. And we did just see one person in chat saying that for those of us with who don't use ad block, uh, can you just repeat the end of that quickly? Which is basically, we do want to add everything to kit bashing as soon as we can, as we are able to do so. Um, on, so I know, Tegan, you talked a little bit briefly to physical minis um, and how we want to make sure that people can buy minis um, uh, when kit bashing goes live. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about the uh, about physical minis in general. So I think a really important thing that maybe uh, Mav can show us right now is you can kit bash wild stuff. And it is absolutely wonderful. I saw someone in chat asking like, well, what if I don't want a physical mini? What if I just want it in digital form? That's so legit. That's amazing. But if you do want to buy it, there are some things like we need to make sure it is printable. Um, so <laughs> Mav, do you kind of want to go through uh, what the print check looks like? Yeah. So one of the biggest uh, or issues when it comes down to kit bashing and allowing users to put things anywhere and everywhere is that it it leaves a lot of room for uh, printability issues, um, basically. So like floating parts um, or meshes that are really warped, things that are too small, all these type of things um, can affect printability quite a bit. Uh, so what we have added to the site is we have a printability checker now um, for this as well. That basically goes through, tries to identify ish or parts um, that are conflicting or have issues with, with the print check and give you a breakdown of what these are. Um, looks like it's a little bit wrong right now, showing these parts is too small, even though they're fine. But basically, we have checks to see if parts are floating, if parts are too small, if uh, things are basically broken and warped. And when I say when I say that, I'm talking about like if you have a case of we allow you to move anything on the site, including like the meshes and, and uh, joints, something like that's pretty bad and is uh, not great. So we flag things like this as well for the user too. And all these at the end of the day are basically just warnings as well. This doesn't affect the digital side at all. So if you want like a digital STL of it broken like this, if you want to stand E like this. Um, or if you just want to use a booth for any of that stuff or this type of stuff, uh, none of this will affect uh, that part or part of the process. This is entirely to make sure and help users um, to be able to to ensure that their minis have the best chances of success of surviving the, the print um, or comparing them against basically all of our other uh, parts on the site. We want it to be as close to the experience of using our pretty uh, pretty heavily defined and formed objects um, to make sure that we still have a credible mini for you at the end of the day. Um, and all this check again is totally automated as well. Um, it gets in more complex too, especially when we start to get some like really complex models here as well. So here's here's a, a lot more complex model made in Kit Fashion as well. So we'll have our floating parts and stuff. Um, this is and actually all this. such a good exa example too, Mav, because I have this um, 
uh, that we printed out and painted recently. Uh, I actually have two versions of it because this one I put together wrong. That's on me. That's no, through <laughs> no fault of the site. And we have one here as well. And this is such a good example. I don't have the camera quality to really showcase it, but that tiny delicate flower on top. This is beautiful. I love this. This was made by one of our alpha testers. I am obsessed with this golem. That's a really good example of something that as a, as a home print, as a digital mini, wonderful touch. But if you think about this having to be shipped across state or country lines, you're getting, you're getting a little precarious with that. So stuff like scaling things down, scaling this flower down, or maybe you're like, dang, I'm finally, I am sick of my assassin having chunky stilettos, shoes or knives, whatever works for your assassin, I'm gonna scale them down. Aesthetically on the site, gonna look amazing. But something we really wanna make sure people are aware of is that our all of our assets are made in incredibly high detail. Like it just, it looks beautiful as is, but once you start scaling stuff down, that can get really thin really quickly. Going back to the stiletto, those are already thin knives. You scale that down at all, and it's probably gonna get flagged as unprintable pretty quickly. Um, so just really be aware, like scaling, especially thin assets down, that can run into, uh, that can become a problem pretty quickly. So if you absolutely need to scale something down, you want an assassin with tiny, thin little stilettos, maybe have them um, maybe on their, on their belt or something so that it's kind of flush against the mini. So you may end up kind of seeing these, these things being flagged. Like Mav said, it might show as, hey, this is unprintable. That, th that's not always a hard and fast rule. There may be things that are flagged as unprintable that end up being printable, but just something to really be aware of is like, we really want to make sure that your minis show up and you're able to use them. Like we, we hate when people are like, oh, I really wanted my mini and it broke. We want to avoid that happening as much as possible. So just think about keep stuff kind of chunky, keep stuff really well supported. Um, and in case you're watching this stream being like, oh, write it down, okay, record the VOD, watch it back. You do not need to stress about that all because at all because whenever you first kind of dip your toe into kit bashing, which to answer a question in chat will, is and will remain a pro slash pro plus only feature. Um, what will happen is a quiz will pop up and it's fun, it's thematic. We have our little iconic uh, innkeeper who's walking you through everything. And we're gonna cover all of the basic types of unprintability that you might run into. So it'll be a wonderful, you know, which of these three minis is unprintable? And I'll tell you all now, no trick questions in there. You're gonna see a mini who their torso is twisted 180 and they have a look of severe consternation on their face. That one's not printable. So do not stress if you don't get the quiz right the first time, we're not gonna be like, I'm sorry, you do have to delete your account. Those are the rules. Like it's just there to, to be helpful for everyone. So, um, but yes, anyway, uh, I do wanna talk about physical minis a little bit more because a question that we get a lot is, uh, are the rules different for color printed premium plastic minis than they are for uh, color standees? So Tegan, do you maybe want to take this one? Yeah, great question. For all of our 3D printed miniatures, we try to create a uniform set of printability constraints. So they all have the same ones. Um, we uh, add thickening to elements where necessary so that they can print. Um, for regular Hero Forge miniatures, um, we'll add supports now and again. We'll connect the feet to the ground really nicely with a little sort of a little support. Um, and those things you're kind of on your own to some extent of kit bashing. Um, so that's why we do such an extensive set of tutorials. Um, as for standees, which are kind of flat that don't have the same constraints, uh, for kit bashing, one of the things that we're working on is even with floating parts, standees should work. So we have to trace a kind of an outline that's cut out in acrylic around those standees. And uh, we're just updating our algorithms to work with a bunch of floating parts. So there are almost no constraints for kit bashed standees, but there are tons of 3D printed constraints for anything that's physical uh, that's 3D printed. 
Um, and just to answer a few more questions that are moving away from the physical minis a little bit, but uh, I think we can do like a rapid fire answer. I've been trying to pull them from chat as much as possible, as many of people in chat can see. There's a lot happening, so if you ask a question and we don't get to it, uh, either ask it again, don't spam it, or make sure you're in the Discord because we can kind of talk about it after the fact. But rapid fire answering some questions from chat. We got a question about mount slash familiar posing. Oh, can you? You can make a le legally distinct ratatouille if you want to. Legally distinct, you can do all that and more. You can put a little rat on a chef's head, legally distinct. You can pose. Mav worked so hard. I, I came to Maverick with a special request and I'm like, I would love to have pets posable as soon as possible. And instead of being like, ah, oh, fine. I mean, Mav, you were like, yes, I love that. We're doing that today, which was wonderful and so appreciated. And we have this great demo for it right now. I, I, I am curious how uh, how difficult was it to kind of get the the familiar posing put in there? Because it basically means putting skeletons where there weren't skeletons before, which sounds a lot more ominous than it is. But do you want to talk through that a little bit? Oh, you are muted right now. Just as a heads up. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so good news is for a lot of cases, like underlying skeletons uh, did actually exist. It comes down to how do we actually hook into it? How do we use it and make it manipulatable on the site itself? Um, so basically anything that had some sort of like advanced posing already existed meant that the skeleton existed. So we started to hook into those more across the board. Um, we are modulized or the way we build skeletons pretty heavily. So we can feed in basically any of the skeletons we have, kind of auto-generate the, these meshes from that to actually uh, create the skeletons and make it all super uh, complex and editing. We've got it down now to the point basically or where all, all the artists effectively have to do is just tag a bone that they want for kit bashing and it'll automatically generate out these skeletons uh, for you guys to use and be able to manip manipulate. So because of that, that's why we've been able to be able to go through and every single familiar now at this point has bones. The only exceptions really are like the robots, which they technically have bones, but there's, there's only a few of them in general because they're not very, uh, it's called them. They're not very complicated in minis, and they're very uh, they're very very rigid models in comparison to uh, the other parts. But yeah, so any of the familiars that are, that we have on the site, our site now, as well as the mounts, um, should all be working totally with the bones and be entirely uh, posable uh, by the users now. Um, the goal is to basically anything that has bones that could be edited somewhere else on the site at all, or looks like that you should be able to. Our goal is to basically expose these, make them accessible to you guys, and give you guys sort of the most tools possible to be able to uh, edit these uh, as you like. <laughs> Look at that cat. We all have to say it simultaneously, <laughs> ooh, big stretch, because that is one big stretch going on. <laughs> um, also, something that I should have flagged uh, right at the start of the stream, and I'm so sorry that I didn't, is that we not only have Tegan and Maverick here uh, on camera, but we also have a bunch of people that have uh, either worked on kit bashing or know everything there is to know about our physical products we have them in chat right now so if you see uh michael underscore hero forge if you see luke underscore uh hf or you see hf underscore zach uh and they are responding to you very authoritatively about kit bashing there's a reason for that they're not just confidently wrong they they have worked on this so uh if you see an answer from them it's just as good as uh, if we answered it verbally, uh, but we still will still try to uh, get to everyone's questions in here. And then the, the last thing about familiars is someone is asking, how big can you make them? Uh, and that's similar to the question. It's more of a printing thing because we do have a, a max cap because our printers print plates are only so you can't you cannot make a life size bear. If that's what you're asking, I am going to have to disappoint you right now. But Mav, do you want to show uh, what the <laughs> option would be if someone wanted to? Like, what's the biggest we can go? You are muted again. <laughs> My goodness, I keep doing that. You're well, good, good news is... A lot of moving parts. Yeah. Uh, if you do anything for uh, just the digital STL files themselves, so you buy it digitally, you can make it as big as you want because we give you the actual source file to be able to ed or edit and scale it up yourself. Uh, as for the, the site itself, um, you can scale things... Uh, Pretty dang big in general. We do have a bounding box. Let's see if it pops up right now. It's not doing too well. Um, but there's really effectively not much of an upper limit on We technically have them in place of how big you can make them. It'll get pretty unusable and stuff and start to fall out of the, the bounds. Um, but let me see if I can show this with a better object here. Let's go back down to normal size. So some of our 
basically as we start to scale objects up and they start to get out of the zone, we start to do some flags and it looks like it might not be working correctly right now. Yes, yeah, so we have a balance basically for how far out you can actually put objects. You can see it's starting to run into this. Can't go any I further. Believe than, I I did this making a, a comedically large dog recently. If you go to the actual <laughs> check section, it should be like, whoa, slow down there. Um, yeah. So usually and so, that's when it flags red. And so we are we allow some really big, yes, yeah, so you can see this right here. It's just out of balance. Let me see if I can do it on the bear too, if it flags it. Yes, yeah, so you see the surface of flag as well, too. Once things reach that outer bounds and stuff, we do set a hard limit uh, for the printability. If you want to use anything for the booth or as well, just for the cameras, we can scale things up pretty big and kind of ignore this. Um, these are mostly their checks to make sure that they or that the mini still fits in the, the print plate effectively um, and that you can print it. There's really not a hard limit on like how big something can be to be functionally printable. It just comes down to the, the printer size itself. So we do have that or those restrictions just in place to, uh, to make sure that you can't go too big. Even though, I mean, you can still take screenshots of them being too big, but I'll also warn you, if you do want to screenshot something huge, it our, our cameras, having experienced this accidentally suddenly getting an x-ray of my giant dog's face, uh, our cameras only zoom out so far. So if you want to make something huge just for the sake of having like a token or what have you, it, you will perhaps accidentally clip into their face. It's going to be a very not fun time because you'll be like, boom, eyeballs, didn't want to see that. And to answer a question that came up a year ago and a question that I've seen a few times in chat. Yes, we will have, we have primitive shapes that are orbs and we have the ability to add uh, eye design on them. So the question that's been on everyone's mind, certainly mine, can you make biblically accurate jorts creatures? You can, you can. Uh, I think we can end the stream there. I don't believe that anyone has any other questions because that's the only one. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But that is absolutely 100% uh, doable. Um, uh, a question for Tegan. Um, I know you kind of talked about, uh, kit bashing has been something that we wanted on the site for a long time, but when when did the actual development of kit bashing start and what did it look like to you then versus have there been things that you added that we added that was a surprise to you or stuff that maybe alpha testers asked for that you weren't expecting i'm just curious what this experience was like for you like a lot of our features it starts off well what can we do minimally and then at some point we realize all the features we kind of need to add to it and how complex it needs to be um, and then kit bashing is a special surprise because it affects everything on the site all 10,000 parts or whatever we have on the site at this point have to work into kit bashing so there's so much work there <laughs> so I'm, I'm laughing at this eyeball bear situation um if maverick is up for bringing up the video i actually i have a video of the very first kit bashing proof of concept that is so old at this point this is what hero forge looked like <laughs> if you want to display it as a video um and that's to say like making something on the site move around is one thing uh, but making everything on the site move around the right way and getting all of that to print is an entirely different thing so like relatively speaking this is such a tiny amount of work compared to like the just tens of thousands of hours of dev time that have been put into what kitbashing is today um and oh my gosh this is this is hero forge in its baby days <laughs> that's for sure so thank you thank you for bringing that up um as as a demo um and thank you uh, especially maverick and luke for bringing such incredible usability and technical skill to bear on this project like the difference between this proof of concept and what is almost shippable now is just vast in terms of complexity. Um, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this tool really has expanded and ballooned just over the time. Again, it started out as very basic and we've just expanded so much from there. So much of it has come down to just the level of just like adding, combining things together and actually making them stick now, finding them two different bones and stuff, attaching them to the or body parts, making objects of objects, allowing you to copy paste these between uh, different minis as well um just the whole slew of tools that go on top it's been a constant development cycle of we, we think there's just not oh wait wouldn't this be useful and ha or have this as a feature and it's been adding adding on and adding on over the time and stuff and it's come a whole, a whole long way it's got its own 
separate menu as well now on top of it. You just kind of see we overhaul or overhauled a lot of the 3D controls across the board. We've added in the ability now to do our advanced sliders for being able to do or to get things precisely how you want as well too. Um, we have full checks menu or the check menu now as well for being able to show what or what's actually going to be printable, what's not for the user as well. Um, and it, it is just ballooned, ballooned in scope to the point where it's it's a really powerful tool now. It's really powerful. Um, and you, Mav, you just mentioned sliders very briefly, and I kind of want to get into that a little bit more because we've gotten questions both from in chat, from the Discord, from our alpha testers about um, just kind of having, will there be numerical sliders for bone posing, et cetera? Um, I know we very recently added numerical inputs for everyone, not just a pro only feature because it is really awesome to uh, make sure that we're as accessible to as many people as possible. So if you wanted to kind of demo that, kind of let people know what what are all of our little finicky sliders are going to look like. Oh, Mav, I've got bad news. For I you. did it again. Hi. <laughs> yeah. To so be fair, and again, for anyone that came late, <laughs> Mav is controlling Hero Forge. So He's doing a lot right now. No one, no judgment. Uh, continue. Yeah. So the 3D manipulators do work great for a lot of the or day to day manipulation of the site. We've overhauled and we now have the or this spherical rotate tool as well to make it a lot easier to go the correct ways you want. Um, but we still want an ability to allow users to just fine tune it a little bit more, make it easy, even easier to use and more basic we can. So we have these advanced sliders now um, or as well on any of the parts. This is just easily expandable. We have a cogwheel just next to any of the part. And this will open up just the sliders that will control this specific part. So you can see or I can move or translate, move this around as well. And with or with the introduction now of us opening up our numerical sliders to everyone, uh, this also works the same way um, for this section as well, too. So you just type in values here if you want to. If I could, oh, I delete the part. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, so you can type in numbers here as well. Don't press delete. There's that's a bug with it right now. It looks like, but yeah, you can do values and stuff and set it however you'd like in the scene this way. Um, control it, scale it, all this type of stuff. You can clear different things that you've done on it as well too. Reset the objects and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we've added this as accessibility. Should be a lot easier now um, too to get the exact controls you want. And if you want to put dial in, put exact numbers, you have the freedom to do that now. Amazing. It's I, I love being able to have the 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 numerical just like getting that little finicky bit. Someone mentioned too that that's going to be really helpful if you want something that's like uh, completely mirrored on both sides. Being able to get that in uh, exactly right is perfect. And I did see someone in chat saying it would be awesome if we had fryer breathing features for mouths of minis. I have great news about what you're going to be able to do with kit bashing. That is a perfect example. A lot of our examples that we have been showing with kit bashing have been truly monstrous. Just like what's happening here, what's happening on screen right now. But there's also kind of little things like that that you can do just like, hey, I want to have a fire breathing effect. Um, we've even, even seen some people go, I want a ponytail, but maybe what if I took like the braids from the unicorn, literal, not figurative, ponytail and put it on, shrunk it down, put it on their head to have that perfect like perky ponytail. You can do stuff like that too. I think a lot of us when we talk about kit bashing, you know, um, everyone internally especially is like monsters, let's go nuts. Uh, but there are small subtle things you can do as well, which is really cool. Um, Tegan, uh, a question that we've gotten sort of broadly, we have some questions about how kit bashing will be interacting with the community library. Um, and uh, a question that we have about that is t two things. Um, can you upload an unprintable mini in the community library? And also, what does what does importing uh, stuff that is kit bashed in uh, from the community library look like? Yeah, uh, the question. The answer is yes. You can put all sorts of stuff in the community library. It doesn't need to be printable. Um, we do mark things as kit bashing, um, so you can search through the community library for just kit bashed stuff or not, and when it comes to importing kit bashing, that was something that actually, I think, was added really recently um, during the development. And you can go to the advanced import and bring something in from something else. And the beauty of that is that it comes in at the same location, snapped to the same place. So you could make, for example, a really cool gun arm with like a bunch of interesting stuff on it, and then go to the advanced import and bring that gun, on, gun arm onto any character as it is fully intact. Um, it's 
pretty powerful and pretty cool. I have a few other like rapid fire questions I can answer too um, while I've got some space. Um, Meldred Blast asks, will resolution increase as you increase the scale of things? While the geometry resolution doesn't increase, um, a feature I'm actually working on right now is adding more texture resolution. So if you scale something up, it will get more like surface resolution and not get as blurry. Um, so yes, to some extent. Um, but if you take something really small and make it really large and then try to 3D print it, you might see a few facets on it. <laughs> Um, there was a question about toes and the posability of them. We are indeed working on a toe bean posable situation, um, which is very good. Uh, Wolfcam asks, are we going to get leg and neck length sliders? And while kit bashing lets you move stuff all around in ridiculous ways, we are actually just working on general sliders for those as well. So um, we want we want more body proportions, and it doesn't just have to be your kit bashing. Kit bashing only gives you sort of so much control because it's hard to get something to look anatomically correct using the controls in the same way. Um, so we want to make that a little a little easier on Yarls and allow for different body proportions because Hero Forge by default is heroic thirty millimeter miniature scale, uh, and then. Uh, Starch Skate asks um, about the import. So I already answered that question. Yes, you'll be able to import stuff using the advanced import. Um, and then there was a request for linked decals, similar to how you can put a part under something. Um, that is entirely a new idea. I haven't heard that one. A great idea. Uh, we'll add it to our feature list after the stream and hopefully get to it at some point. Probably not for launch, um, but that would be a very useful thing. Um, thank you so much, Tegan. You are doing such an amazing job of keeping an eye on chat as well. Um, I also have some rapid fire ones that I think I can take uh, a stab at answering. We've seen a few people in chat going, what if I love two different parts of two different weapons, chop A, chop B, put them together into C. Uh, the way we've kind of been describing kit bashing is it's a little more additive than subtractive. So uh, if you want to do something like that, you could get really creative with having the two weapons go together, maybe scale one up so there's a little bit of uh, uh, clipping to make it work together perfectly. But for right now, um, something that we're not doing with kit bashing is making it so that you can kind of chop stuff up. Um, that's that's not quite on our radar yet. Tegan, I don't know if that's something that we have on our radar. Do we really want to focus on keeping it additive? We've definitely kind of sketched up what it might look like to say, take a cut plane and then apply it to an object and say, everything past this point gets cut off. Uh, but the technical constraints there are quite extensive. Um, so definitely not for MVP. Um, and it also depends on what like practical real uses to end up being for that, because there's a lot of ways to use what it currently exists. Um, uh, we're probably going to end up splitting up our items a little more, keeping in mind kit bashing, so like hilts of swords, that kind of thing, but we're exploring what that means. We're not sure yet. Yeah. Um, we also, uh, God, sorry, it, we're, we're getting towards the end of our stream, and I'm trying to, we're starting to try to get through the rapid fire question so there may be more pauses as we're trying to make sure that we're able to get everything uh another question that we've got uh going back to the community library and i'm so sorry for missing it at the time is uh will a non-pro user be able to open a, a kit bashed mini or will a non-pro user be able to buy a kit bashed mini so You'll still be able to share a miniature. If you're pro, you'll be able to share that miniature, and a non-pro user will be able to open it. Um, but there won't be any editing or buying um, without subscribing to pro. Yes. Uh, and a question we've been getting a lot uh, as well is, will this give uh, users a little bit more flex flexibility representing fat bodies? Um, to a degree, because we're going to have the scaling on there, but updated uh, body morphology is actually a separate project that our art team has has. Uh, just started kind of working on. Um, so that is something that is on our radar. I know we've been asked about it a lot and it's something that we are uh, very mindful of. Um, a question for uh, Tegan, I guess, again, we do get a question a lot as well. For kit bashing, having something like A posing or T posing could be really nice to kind of do your, your mixing and matching in outfits. Uh, would we ever consider adding something like that just to, to make kit bashing a little easier? Uh, it is on our feature list. 
and if it turns out to be kind of needed for some cases we'll we'll add it but i am like unaware of the the full use in the end like a miniature is going to end up in a pose and whatever you add to it in that t pose is quite likely going to not work the way you want it to in the final pose so um we'll have to see how far people push the system and what they need now, one thing to mention with this, though, as well, uh, is that kit bashing is additive or based off of everything else that we have on the site. So any of the posing that you want to do as well, too, um, if you attach any of the objects to, let me just do this to demo as well, too. So if I attach like an item to the shoulder pad over here, and then I go into, oops, and I go into the pose menus and choose any of our actual uh, poses that we have here. Um, all of this will update and snap with the mini here as well, too. So if you're looking for some just like easier ways to edit your mini, attach things to it before you're like happy with the pose, you can go back to the pose menus, change the poses of the characters. And as long as you snap or snap your parts to the bones, um, you can edit it and be able to find the regions this way. So it's kind of, it's like a happy medium between uh, what, or what you guys would want to do for that um, and implementation. Um, so the pose menu can be used very well for that. Is it expected useful too? It's final thing. Uh, hands are very useful for this because hands can take a while since so there's so many bones in them. It's very easy. You can go in, you can pose a, a hand pose ahead of time um, in the advanced menu, and then you can go into kit batching itself and fine tune it from there if you're looking to. Which is amazing. Uh, the finger posing was one of, I think, the first things that I did in kit bashing, and immediately I was like, oh, this is so much. This is amazing. This is so exciting. So. Uh, I just, I don't know. That's again, that's one of those that you may look at and go, I can't think of any finger posing that I want to do yet, but it works extremely well. I have used it for holding, making a, a character hold a book exactly the way I want it to, uh, which I think is really incredible. Um, I, I think we're kind of, we're, we're kind of getting down to the end of our time. We've answered, uh, as many questions as we could. I know there are still a lot that are floating around. Uh, we've kind of tried to hit on the general themes that we see come up with all of the questions. As uh, as mentioned, if you go ahead, join the Discord, exclamation mark, Discord and chat, we will be able to answer a few more questions in there. One big caveat is that, as, as uh, our wonderful moderator, Smercury, has been mentioning in chat, we really are trying to focus just on kit bashing for this stream. Uh, and a question that we got in chat that I do want to talk about is a uh, question from a user. Is a kitbash mini going to be considered an XL mini or something new? And maybe, Tegan, do you want to talk about kind of how how kit, uh, refined XL pricing relates to kitbashing and what that means exactly? Yeah, happy to clarify that a little. Uh, kitbashing adds a lot of complexity uh, to our processing side of things. So we're gonna, on our end, need to do a lot more kind of hands-on checks. We're probably gonna have to, uh, while we do want to give you all the tools you can to see when things don't print, um, there are gonna be a lot of problems. Um, and as such, uh, we add a small, I believe it's currently set for a couple of dollars, um, uh, additional charge for kit bashing just because of the processing and handling um, that we need to do on our side. Um, but otherwise, uh, it doesn't add to the volume. It just adds a small charge up, small charge up on top. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, on the upside, every single kit bashed mini that y'all make, a real human's going to be looking at, and that's very exciting because that means you have somewhere, someone out there in the world witnessing your absolute genius, which is cool. Um, so we saw, we have people asking about the character limit. Um, I, I think it'd be probably good to talk about, I know people really want to be able to have three minis on one base. Um, do we kind of want to talk briefly about why there's so much cool stuff you can add to kit bashing, but three minis is a little different, uh, difficult. I don't know, Mav, maybe do you want to take that one? I don't mean to take you away from blowing up this golem per like currently, but. Yeah, so 3D mini, or sorry, 3 minis um, is technically possible. The issue comes down to, again, the, the assets that we load in the browser, the, that's a lot uh, for a lot of computers to handle, specifically phones and stuff. 
Um, or a big reason why we or haven't actually released this is just due to performance across the board, making sure that we can maintain that for everyone. Uh, kit bashing is another layer on top of that to add even more stuff uh, to your character. A lot of people are already building basically pseudo pseudo characters out of other things as, as well. So while you can't or technically have a third character or whatsoever due to just performance uh, limitations that we have, uh, you can use kit bashing as well as an added feature to add a, add in more stuff on top of that. So we're already so we're already at two characters. Now you got two characters plus twenty items with whatever you can do on top of that. Um, so we think with those or with those or two or things in place alone, that should not realistically give you a lot of or, or creativity and availability to make new things with the parts. But yeah, we do have a limitation on the three characters because it does start to become too much uh, for the site, and then you will start to see some pretty heavy performance impacts um, if we go that route. We will one day release three miniatures, but like Mav says, there's so many different points on which it can crash or not save. It increases the character save files. Um, when we're meshing stuff to send, if you're buying an STL, combining all those polygons gets far more likely to break if there's more miniatures, etc. So there's like 20 different points in which it can go really wrong. And we're sort of keeping an eye on all those different points um, as people's PCs improve as meshing algorithms improve etc one day we will do free miniatures but when we're doing kit bashing is not the time because kit bashing is already madness everything will already be on fire <laughs> yep oh yeah um now i'm i'm we're starting to get kind of some more off topic questions in chat so i think we've done a pretty good job of answering uh everything that we got already and we'll probably start winding down the only very broad question I wanted to pose to both of you is we've talked about MVP, which for people in chat who may not know, MVP is like, this is what we have to have at launch. Uh, these are the, the most valuable players, people. I've never been sure what the P means. That's not important. But what is some stuff that people can expect uh, to be added after the fact? We've talked about clothing posing, but uh, what other stuff are you guys excited uh, to let people know that they'll be able to get as well? Um, MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. Never um, knew that. <laughs> a little bit of an, in, an industry term there. And... <laughs> really? I never, I assumed, I so confidently was like most valuable. <laughs> wow, I should have double checked with you before this stream. You ever like are so confidently wrong? You're like, surely that doesn't mean anything else. We can continue and I'm just going to blush over here to myself. In, in our case, though, it could stand for a lot of things, including most valuable parts in the sense that they're the parts that we really need to be releasing with kit bashing. Um, and, and I think that's one of the main things we'll be adding after kit bashing launch is more stuff that you can add. Um, we have to put a limit on some of the more complica complicated stuff just as we get them working. Though with the extra time that we are giving to this um, with the delay and release, we might be able to get more than we were anticipating initially. Um, so. Uh, I think that the other biggest thing will be a, uh, a non-uniform scale on joints. We'll see if we can even get that out because it's actually very technically complicated. Um, I'll give the, the example, if you scale this bone up in an arm, um, by default, this piece of the arm is going to get really scaled as well. So it's going to scale in one axis while you scale this joint up. Um, so it doesn't behave as how do you expect, and we need to do a lot of work to get that working. So for the first release joint scales will be uniform. So they have to scale in every axis at the same time. Uh, otherwise it will cause kind of chaos for, um, for some of the ways that that works. So that's one of the things we have an eye on for after release. Um, but as with anything we make, um, we'll be refining it far into the future um, as needed. <laughs> yeah, we, um... We've also seen some questions, so getting the scaling is one thing. Um, Mav, was there any sort of future stuff that you wanted to touch on, uh, especially as well? Yeah, so another uh, big point uh, that we're working on, just improvements uh, down the road as well, um, that's not the target for MVP, but for uh, the time after that, is just to make snapping and stuff and or attaching objects to the bones that we think that you want to attach them to easier to use um, and better to work with. That's a big reason why in our current uh, menu we don't have the chest um, and legs um, in place right now. The reason being is, while well, yes, they do work and you can uh, edit them in the site, they're a little bit cumbersome to use because it's hard to actually really snap it to. Like, a lot of cases, you're going to want the chest to actually snap to the lower spine or spine bone that's kind of hidden behind the shirt itself. And you'll be able to expose that bone and be able to drag it onto it to do that. 
Uh, basically, we're working through on tools to make it easier to attach things to different parts and have those parts connect where they need to, um, and then be able to take those parts and move them. Uh, another big thing as well is just moving them across minis as well. We do have functionality, like you can imp import um, other kit batch characters into your current character as well too, the same way as you do it with anything else, just the simple um, import option here as well. It should be, so long as you don't go over the 20 part limit, we'll see where we're at. So you see, I just imported um, from my other character right there. We've got a whole new weapon imported uh, specifically from that character. Um, so we'll be also working to just expand the uh, process of being able to copy paste things uh, across characters, be able to share things easier across the characters as well, um, and just make those tools easier to use. The idea is kind of so you can build um, sorry, ideas. You can build things in a single scene if you want to. Um, so you like this this weapon, for instance, and are also effectively eventually create a library of kit bash parts yourself that you want to. Um, and then be able to import those into your minis uh, are very easy as well. Um, so that'll be coming. Um, we're just working on tools to improve it. You already have the functionality for it as it is. You can copy paste things across characters right now. Let me see if I can turn this real quick. So I copied it from uh, one scene right now. I've got just, and this is just on the copy paste clipboard right now, and you can paste it over just like this. It is a little bit bugged, so the color didn't or pass over right, or right now, but we are working to fix that. Um, but yeah, tools in general, just to make it so it's easier to share individual parts and use Kitbash as a, a part builder as well, uh, will be coming. Awesome. I know people have been extremely stoked about being able to do that as well. We've been seeing that question in uh, chat a bunch. We also have one more question from Old Crow Gaming, and then I think we'll probably uh, wrap it up, call it good, which is how about how long after release is clothing posing ex uh, expected? We yeah, that's a good question. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Mav, do you want to take this one? I was going to say, that's a good question. Uh, it comes entirely down to how fast we get through the development. Um, I, I don't. We don't have an exact date in mind right now. September 9th, though, for the initial release gives us a lot of uh, a leg room. Uh, and like Tegan mentioned her, uh, earlier, um, if we do or get through the development time, there is a chance that this just or does just come with release. Um, but it is a bit of an unknown right now as we tackle other features on the site. It's not the highest priority right now, but you should expect it relatively quickly after the, uh, the initial release of Get Fashion. I wanted to just before we wrap up, do a huge shout out to Maverick um, for all of the incredible usability focus um, that he's given uh, Maverick checks out every, all the feedback in the alpha forums, looks at all of the, well, <laughs> he's not omniscient, but um, <laughs> omnipresent, uh, but does an incredible job of listening to feedback and implementing and making incredibly usable tools. And a big shout out to Luke too, for some incredibly technical, uh, amazing work on the print check stuff. Um, Maverick and Luke have been pivotal developers on kit bashing in just a, and a massively important for the project. Um, and then I do want to give a shout out to our alpha testers, the few, the brave who are working on uh, like very unstable tools who are willing to put up with characters that have been completely broken by updates we've put out. Um, Yal's feedback and uh, creations are so, so valuable through this process as we, uh, as we get towards releasing it for real. Thank you both so much for uh, joining us on the stream and just to uh, echo Tegan, our alpha testers have been so helpful. Our uh, influencers like Durf, like Tabletop Time, like Boile Hobby Time, who not only braved a brand new tool and gave us amazing feedback, but made videos with it as well. We appreciate so much. Just everyone has given such thoughtful, amazing feedback. Um, and we are we're so excited for this to, to come out to everyone. Uh, we'll, we'll mention it again. Right now we are looking at a September 9th release, bearing any unforeseen delays, any unforeseen surprises. So uh, in the meantime, we'll continue working on this and making it perfect. As you saw on stream tonight, we have so much cool stuff that's ready to go, but there were a couple of times that I know Mav was like, ooh, that's a little bugged right now. Hold on. Um, as y'all saw, they were very minor things. But we want to make sure it's really perfect before it gets to y'all. So as I said before, if you had any questions in chat that you felt were not able to get answered, as long as they're on topic to kit bashing, 
uh, make sure that you go ahead and join our Discord where we will be, uh, myself, Smercury, Hexa will be around to uh, answer any questions that you might have just over the next month or two, two-ish, uh, before it goes live. Um, and Dustin and Tegan, thank you so much for joining us. This was absolutely amazing. Uh, I know everyone in chat and Black Druid Wolf, to your question, we answered it a few times in chat, but I'll do it out loud. Yes, you can uh, flip stuff like hairstyles in kit bashing. I'm so sorry that we only had the written answer for you. So I wanted to give you a verbal one as well. Uh, but in the meantime, everyone, have a wonderful night. Uh, Mav, Tegan, do you want to say your goodbyes as well? Thank you, Annika. Really appreciate it. Goodbye, chat. It's always a pleasure to check in, uh, hear the enthusiasm, hear the ideas, hear the questions. I wish I had more time to answer more of those questions. Um, and I'm I'm always hanging around uh, Reddit and uh, Facebook to try to answer them anyway. So hopefully I'll catch you then. Thank you for joining. Thank you, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been our, our absolutely phenomenal to be able to show off the features that we've been working so hard on for the last year now and have the, the product where it is uh, today. Um, again, we're, we're, all, we're, we're always active in our social media as well, too. Um, I'm fairly active in the Discord, so if you have any kickbash questions uh, or specifically, uh, feel free to ask questions in there as well, too. Um, we'll try to get to, or to what we can. Um, but other than that, it's been an absolute pleasure. All right. Thanks, y'all. Uh, see you in the Discord. See you online. See all of the amazing things that you create. Uh, take care and have a wonderful night. Bye.